نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها كتابا متشابها مثانية قشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of our series Understanding the Quran I am your host Yasir Qadhi In our last episode we were discussing the revelation of the Quran or the concept of revelation the concept of wahi We're going to continue today talking about the process of wahi and the fact that it was revealed over a gradual period of time. Now as we all know, the Qur'an did not come down as a physical book from the heavens. Rather the Qur'an came down piecemeal, bit by bit, over a period of 23 years. And this phenomenon is actually new for the Qur'an. The previous revelations were given in one go, at once. So the entire book came down at once upon the Prophet, not as a physical book, but as a recited revelation that the Prophets memorized. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had it different. He had it bit by bit. Days and weeks would go by and then a verse or a surah would come. And the frequency and the quantity of revelation differed from time to time and place to place. And Allah refers to this phenomenon in the Quran itself. For example, in Surah number 25 verse 32, Allah says, Those who disbelieved, they ask and question, why isn't the Quran revealed all at once? Allah says, كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ we do this so that we can strengthen your resolve, strengthen your morale, strengthen your chest, meaning your heart. And we have revealed it to you gradually, stage by stage. So what are the stages of revelation? How was the Qur'an actually sent down? Our scholars have told us that there are a number of stages, three distinct stages of the Qur'an being recorded and revealed. The first of these stages, of course, the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, it is eternal. But the first stage after this eternality, the first stage that we can put a, a time to, is the writing down of the Qur'an upon the Lawh al-Mahfuz. Now, what is the Lawh al-Mahfuz? The Lawh al-Mahfuz is referred to in the Qur'an. And it means the prescribed tablet or the preserved tablet. And Allah says in the Qur'an, in Surah 85, verses 21 to 22, Nay, this is indeed a glorious Qur'an inscribed in the Lawh al-Mahfuz, or the protected tablet. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inscribed or written the entire Qur'an in the Lawh al-Mahfuz. From the Lawh al-Mahfuz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an physically down to the lowest heavens in a place that the scholar Ibn Abbas, the famous companion of the Prophet he said Al-Baytul Izza or the place of honor and the house of honor. So Allah Azza wa Jal physically sent down the Lawh al mahfuz the portion of it that is the Quran, he sent it down to the lowest heavens. And he did this on Laylatul Qadr in Ramadan. Allah says, Inna anzannahu fi Laylatul Qadr. We have sent it all down in Laylatul Qadr. So, Laylatul Qadr is the night of power, we call it, one of the last ten odd nights of Ramadan, we don't know exactly which one, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically revealed and sent down that portion of the Lawh al mahfuz that is the Qur'an, He sent it down to a place called Al-Bayt al izza And this is something that we know from Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, and Ibn Abbas is the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once it is now in the Lawh al mahfuz the third stage and the final stage is that Jibreel alayhi salam would then bring it bit by bit, portion by portion to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is what Allah refers to in the Quran when He says in Surah number 26 verses 192 to 194, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And indeed this is the revelation of the Lord of the worlds, نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ The Holy Spirit has brought it to you. Upon your heart, 
لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ So that you can be from amongst the warners. So this revelation from Jibreel to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lasted 23 years. As for the writing of the Lawh Al-Mahfud, it was done many, many, many centuries. We don't even, cannot even put a time before the creation of the heavens and earth. In one hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the first thing that Allah created was the pen. And then he told the pen to write. And the pen said, what should I write? And it was told, write everything that shall happen until the Day of Judgment. And this is the uh, Lawh Al-Mahfud. And included in this is the Qur'an. And then the second stage was the revelation of the Qur'an to the lower heavens at a place that Allah knows. It is called Al-Baytul Izzah. And the third stage from there to the Prophet Wasallam. this occurred 20, for 23 years over a period of the 23 years in which the Prophet Wasallam was inspired. The Qur'an itself mentions in a number of verses that there is no possibility of tampering the revelation. The fact that it has been preserved in the Lawh al-Mahfud shows you that no one can touch it. Because al lawh al-Mahfud translates as the protected tablet. Nobody can approach this tablet. Nobody can come close to it. And Allah calls it protected, showing you that what is written there will occur. What is written there, nobody can change it. The trustworthiness of the angels has also been guaranteed by Allah. Allah calls the angel Jibreel a ruhul amin, which means the trustworthy angel. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the angels as saying, لا يسبقونه بالقول They do not do anything until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them وَهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِ يَعْمَلُونَ And they act based upon the commands of Allah. So the Lawh al-Mahfud has been protected. The angels have been shown to be trustworthy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa himself has been proven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has proven and shown and demonstrated and stated that he would not forget any verse or miss any verse. Initially, when the Prophet ﷺ would get inspiration from Jibreel, when Jibreel would recite to him, he would become scared of forgetting the verses. So as soon as Jibreel began reciting, he would repeat after him even before Jibreel had finished. So when Jibreel would say one phrase, our Prophet ﷺ would repeat that phrase while Jibreel was on the second phrase. And there was a mixture of voices that Jibreel is reciting, and the Prophet in his eagerness to get this from Jibreel, he too is reciting. So, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in the Qur'an, in verses uh, 16 to 18 of Surah number 75, Allah says, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به Don't rush with your tongue in order to hastily get the Qur'an. Don't do this. إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ it is our responsibility to collect it and recite it for you. فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ So when we are reciting it, فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ Your job is to pay attention. This is a command to our Prophet ﷺ. Don't worry, you're not going to forget the Qur'an. Allah is saying, I am guaranteeing, you are not going to forget the Qur'an. Your job is to listen to Jibreel and we are going to collect it for you. إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَهُ Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ was commanded to proclaim everything of the message. And if he didn't do so, Allah says, then he would be taken care of. Allah even threatens our Prophet ﷺ with punishment if he doesn't give the message. And that threat is not meant for the Prophet ﷺ because he will do the, the, the job that Allah has given him. The threat is meant for us in the sense that we are assured that our Prophet ﷺ has done the full job. Allah is telling us that our Prophet has succeeded in doing the job. For example, in verse number 67 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is chapter 5, Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الرَّسُولُ بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ O Prophet, proclaim the message which has Allah has given you. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَتَهُ If you fail in this mission, then you have failed in proclaiming the mission of Allah. If you fail in giving the Qur'an to people, then you have failed as a prophet. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an. And in fact, in another verse, Allah says, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ If the prophet were to invent some lies against us and attribute them to us, if he were to invent verses 
and then say this is from Allah. Allah says, لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ We would have seized him by his right hand and cut off his life artery. Now would the Prophet ﷺ ever do this? Of course not. Why is Allah saying this? So that me and you are reassured. We know that our Prophet ﷺ has conveyed the full message untampered with. Now the question arises, how much Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ? Did an entire surah come down all at once? Or did only a verse come down? The response is, generally speaking, the quantity of revelation varied from time to time. Sometimes only one verse was revealed. Sometimes an entire surah was revealed all at once. And this is rare. And usually a few verses, four, five, six verses were revealed. So the general rule of thumb is that a paragraph or two comes down of the Qur'an at a time. And sometimes even it is reported that two or three words came down. Just a few words came down to add into a certain place. So the quantity of revelation was different. So too was the frequency of revelation. The frequency of revelation became more towards the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because there was more need for wahi. In the beginning there was not that much need, the message was simple, proclaim the worship of one God and the belief of the hereafter. But as time went on and the Muslim ummah created an empire and a state and laws began to be revealed and delegations came and political instances happened, a lot more revelations came down towards the end of the Prophet ﷺ's life. So the quantity and frequency of revelation is not stagnant, but we can say that the quantity, generally speaking, was a paragraph or two, sometimes a word or phrase, sometimes an entire surah, and the, and the frequency also, in the beginning, maybe once every few weeks, once every few months, sometimes even months came by, and no revelation, and towards the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ, sometimes even in the same day, Jibreel will come more than once to tell him about uh, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to summarize uh, today's lecture, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an gradually over a period of 23 years for a number of reasons to strengthen the resolve of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to simplify the memorization of the Qur'an and its understanding by the companions to prove the truthfulness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to prove the miraculous nature of the Qur'an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an over a period of 23 years bit by bit and the frequency of revelation and the quantity of revelation varied from time to time and from place to place and all of this was done looking at the needs of the community looking at what was best for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for the early ummah this brings us to the conclusion of this episode. We will continue our discussion of the sciences of the Quran in our next episode. I hope to see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadith kitaban mutashabiha kitaban متشابها مثانية قشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله